Okay, good morning, everyone. It's already five past 11, so I don't we start our, our conference, our anniversary conference. So ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, dear speakers, dear students, my name is Elżbieta Mikoskuza. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm the NOHA director here at the University of Warsaw, and uh, I would like to welcome you all very, very warmly at our university, at the premises of the Faculty of Law and Administration, uh, at the joint celebration of the 25th anniversaries, silver anniversaries, of the Academic Network on Humanitarian Action, and of the non-governmental organization Polish Humanitarian Action. NOHA, uh, Network on Humanitarian Action is an international association of universities that actually was established in 1993. So our real anniversary will take place in a few months' time. Um, yes, but I will explain later why we decided to celebrate it uh, now. Um, the aim of NOHA is to enhance professionalism in the humanitarian sector by promoting humanitarian values and by providing certificated high-level courses as well as short-term courses. We are also fostering research and policy papers on key humanitarian issues. NOHA is composed now of 12 European universities and cooperates with many partner universities outside Europe as well as with many humanitarian organizations. Our university, University of Warsaw, joined NOHA in 2008, and NOHA programs are run here jointly by two faculties, the Faculty of Law and Administration and the Faculty of Political Science and International Relations, and the deans of the two faculties are present here during this opening session, so, so I would like to welcome them, them very warmly. The Polish Humanitarian Action it's a Polish non-governmental organization which operates in Poland and also in other countries. Actually, today we have among us heads of Polish humanitarian action missions from quite, quite a few regions. Uh, Polish humanitarian action was established in December 1992, so it is a real anniversary. Um, sending first humanitarian convoys from Poland to besieged Sarajevo. It was really the first initiative of this kind in Poland, and since then, the organization has substantially developed itself and considerably expanded its activities. NOHA at the University of Warsaw and Polish Humanitarian Action have been cooperating for many years in different fields. And our main, let's say, joint uh, initiative uh, are postgraduate studies in humanitarian action that are run in Polish language. And I'm happy to see many students from present edition and earlier editions of, of, of those studies. It, it means that it's really a success if our graduates are here with us at this occasion. And uh, at certain point when we realized, I mean, both NOHA and PHA, that our anniversaries fall almost at the same time, we decided to celebrate them jointly. And we could do it in many different ways. We could organize a big reception. No? We could organize a charity ball. We could organize a lottery. But we decided to, choo to choose the way that would be of best benefit for our students, for our staff, for our partners, for our friends, today and in the future which means by organizing and recording this conference. The conference that aims at bringing together academic and practical perspectives on current challenges facing humanitarian aid worldwide, worldwide and allowing for a dynamic, hopefully very dynamic, exchange between these different perspectives. There are five main sessions of the conference, but I would also like to draw your attention to tomorrow's afternoon panels or workshops that will be the results of students' project, project that uh, is carried out in the framework of the European Commission grant, the project uh, that regards implementation of the 2016 World Humanitarian Summit recommendations. We are really very proud 
that our students decided to contribute to our anniversaries conference in such a very ambitious way. And uh, I would really like to invite uh, all of us, all of you, uh, to, to attend um, not only the five conference panels, but also, also to, to tomorrow's afternoon uh, sessions. Uh, the forum to all those exchanges is provided by the University of Warsaw. We are in the, in the premises of, of the Faculty of Law and Administration. The University of Warsaw, which is the best university in Poland and one of the oldest ones. A year ago, we celebrated our bicentennial anniversary. And now I would like to invite Professor Jolanta Hoińska-Mika, the Vice Rector of the University of Warsaw, responsible for student affairs and the quality of teaching, to welcome you on behalf of our university. But before that, I would like to add, <laughs> Ms. Rector, uh, Professor Jolanta Hoińska-Mika is a historian. She is professor at the Institute of History of the University of Warsaw. She's expert in parliamentary history, early modern European history, political culture. But at the same time, she is really a very dedicated member of our NOHA family. She is very deeply involved in all our under undertakings, in all our events, for which we are, of course, very, very grateful. Ms. Rector, the floor is yours. Um, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, it's my privilege and uh, also my great pleasure to welcome you to the University of Warsaw uh, on this 25th anniversary of NOHA and uh, Polish uh, humanitarian action. And first of all, I would like to welcome the whole NOHA and uh, Polish Humanitarian Action Family, all the directors, uh, coordinators, staff, volunteers, students, uh, the whole NOHA, the entire NOHA and PACH family. And particular welcome to Professor Jost Herman, president of NOHA, and Mrs. Janina Ochojska, President and Polish Humanitarian Action Management Board, and of course, Professor Katrin Brack, who came to us from University College Dublin and will be our keynote speaker for, for today. As the University of Warsaw, we are very proud to contribute to the development of the humanitarian sector and to enhance professionalism to the delivery of a humanitarian assistance. And we gather here to learn, discuss, and challenge each other, but also to celebrate 25th anniversary of both organizations. And 25 uh, years, it's a quarter of century. At once, it's uh, so short and so long uh, in the field of humanitarian uh, action, and much was achieved during uh, uh, that time. And also, I think that is now even more to be done, and maybe even it might be even an overwhelming realization. And what is the point of all these efforts? Is it worth it or, or even if it, is it still worth it? Maybe when you first decided to choose humanitarian action as a career of life choice, you were happy, hoping to be able to solve problems, bring assistance and make change. Maybe sometime later it became clear that easy and quick solutions don't exist. Change is slow and often invisible. And even bringing assistance is not so straightforward and often goes wrong. Now in these two days is the time to discuss, to rethink what has been done and to reflect on these and other current challenges in humanitarian actions as challenges there are and always will be. But likewise, there is always a possibility of improving and developing our knowledge, our professional conduct and our commitment to serve and even more to accompany the other in need in difficulty at times of conflict or in his and her efforts to rebuild life.
There is an obvious technical or political expertise you can bring to the areas where you work, whether it's an NGO or a disaster struck community. But there is even more you can learn and do if we take the time to listen and to accompany the so-called in need communities while trying to understand a different logic and different ways of making sense of the world. This is not some romantic vis vision I, would, uh, I am trying to paint here. Rather, I am hoping to challenge you to seek ways of truly combining the urgency of humanitarian action with its main purpose, the other human, his and her life. Our position as humanitarian workers, policy advisors, scholars, is highly privileged one. The task ahead of us is to use and negotiate this privilege to challenge and hopefully change the uneven and unequal of connectedness of the world. It's my hope that this intensive conference will create a space to consider this challenge and chart some ways of addressing it on a day-to-day -day basis in your daily work, as well as the exceptional situation and circumstances you might have to waste. I would like you a very inspiring, full of passion discussion. I, will you, I wish you many, many successes. And once again, welcome to our university. Enjoy our campus. Enjoy staying in Warsaw. Thank you very much, Mrs. Rector. Now let me give the floor to Professor Jost Herman, president of NOHA for three years since uh, 2014, so not 25 years, uh, but for much longer the NOHA director at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands. Mm? Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, indeed, if I would have been uh, NOHA president for 25 years, I would not be alive anymore. Um, <clears throat> dear uh, Mrs. Rector Chowinska Mikas, dear uh, Ms. Janina Ochojska from Polish uh, Humanitarian Action, dear colleague, NOAA Director, uh, Warsaw University, Dr. Mikas Kuza, dear deans present in the audience, and uh, most of all, dear participants. Um, when I was invited by Elsbieta to uh, attend this, uh, this uh, celebratory event, 20, well, almost 25 years of NOAA, really 25 years of Polish Humanitarian Action, almost 10 years of NOAA Warsaw, I truly believe that it was an invitation for a celebration. But now, realizing and looking at the program, I believe that two days of hard work are ahead of us. So I feel a bit cheated from that perspective. <laughs> but my academic nature, of course, immediately uh, made me realize that this is an excellent opportunity to showcase in togetherness, to showcase what NOAA is all about. Uh, as has been mentioned, NOAA as a network of universities, as a growing network of universities, 12 European partners, more than 22 global partners by now, expanding its institutionalized network function across the globe. Uh, NOAA is um, a network of knowledge institutes that tries to be as close to the practitioner's world as possible uh, in order, as our slogan goes, to enhance professionalism and efficiency, effectiveness of humanitarian action. And that's why the choice of this topic of events, uh, the current challenges in uh, humanitarian action, the partnership with uh, Polish humanitarian action uh, is at the core of a strategy that we engaged in over the past couple of years in order to become true also to parts of the outcome of the World Humanitarian Summit, uh, May 2016 in Istanbul, uh, in which the international community also called upon academia to step up its effort and to showcase its relevance to the contemporary situation in international humanitarian action. Academia is relevant, and I'm not saying that only for the sake of myself because I'm an academic, but academia is relevant because we are in a position, or we should be in a position, to generate 
data and analysis that in daily life of people can make a difference in their rate of survival, in their suffering being alleviated. So the bonding between humanitarian uh, practitioner organizations and the universities is therefore also an absolute necessity. We need one another in order to come through to this uh, promise that we made in our, uh, in our uh, network to create more professionalism and enhance effectiveness. We need practitioner organizations in order to lay our hands to get access to relevant data that we can use in our analysis of humanitarian action and processes that are generating humanitarian responses around the world. And so from that perspective, the, 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 the setup of this conference could not have been closer to what for the next forthcoming years uh, NOAA should be all about to be at service of the international humanitarian community to come up with relevant analysis and evidence-based programming for the benefit of humanitarian action. And you know as well as I do the numbers, uh, over 65 million people at this very moment being displaced, over 125 million people being dependent one way or the other in their daily survival upon humanitarian action. Uh, the necessity has never been greater to come to this higher level of effectiveness and efficiency in humanitarian action. And looking back upon this large period of time, this uh, huge period of time of 25 years of NOAA, uh, I believe that we can say that we have come uh, a long way indeed, starting as a small network at the same time that DG Echo, our main sponsor, was being, uh, was being created in 1993. Uh, we have now expanded rapidly and we have go, gone into various areas of both uh, teaching as well as research, as well as training, as well as giving relevant policy advice. And so there's, uh, there's a great deal to look back upon with satisfaction, but we can never be satisfied with what we have achieved so far because the challenges are keep on mounting and the challenges need to be addressed. And it is therefore that I'm so incredibly grateful, not only because I'm here in Warsaw, but because of the past track record of the University of Warsaw over the past 10 years, uh, that we are so grateful that the University of Warsaw so quickly established itself as one of the leading partners in the network, creating all these events that will help us to achieve our goals. And I'm very grateful indeed to, uh, to uh, Dr. Mika Skuza and her team to so en energetically engage in the activities that we, uh, that we, uh, that we uh, together uh, commit to. To showcase the importance of Warsaw, I can, in my, uh, in my concluding uh, statement, I can go back only two, three months in time when the new NOAA student cohort 2017-2019 started its program here in Warsaw during the so-called intensive program that already for also almost eight years, I believe, has been held here in Warsaw each year in September. It was only the second university in the history of NOAA that uh, achieved to have the European Commissioner for Humanitarian Aid as a guest speaker, Mr. Stylianidis. <laughs> and I will disclose a secret to you, the other university was the University of Groningen. <laughs> in 2002, Commissioner Poul Nielsen at that very moment. So that in itself was already an achievement and uh, Commissioner Stylianidis proved uh, to be one of the greatest greatest uh, proponents uh, of uh, humanitarian action and especially the role of education in humanitarian action, the role of education and research in humanitarian action. And so, so for this we have been very grateful for the, you know, to the University of Warsaw that they had been able to uh, make Mr. Steele in this, uh, live up to his promise because he made the promise of course a year in advance and that's with politicians you never know um, uh, that uh, the University of Warsaw uh, made Mr. Steele and this indeed uh, keep his uh, promise true and come to Warsaw very engaged very actively with the student audience and with the staff members that were, uh, were assembled but even something more important happened uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, Mr. Steele and this was so enthusiasmated about what he saw during this opening conference of the NOAA program uh, that uh, in a 
conversation that we were allow allowed to have with him afterwards, uh, he was fully aware of the necessity also for DG Echo at an even more intense level to interact with NOAA together. Just like we feel that we need to prove our relevance as academia to the humanitarian sector, Commissioner Stylianidis is fully convinced that DG, DG Humanitarian Aid and Civil Protection, DG ECHO in short, uh, needs to make much more use of the NOAA network. Uh, it's only now that DG ECHO really starts to realize what an intellectual capacity they have at their disposal to enrich their programming and to create a more solid base of effectiveness and professionalism in their daily policy making when it comes to their global commitment to humanitarian action. So we have a reason to celebrate because of the existence of programs for a multitude of years. We have reason to celebrate because of our intimate relationship with Polish humanitarian action today. But we have definitely also reason to celebrate uh, that Warsaw or that September 2017 will be written down in the NOAA books of history as the year that the relationship with DG ECHO, already in existence for 25 years, will go into the next stage of even greater cohesion and togetherness. I wish you a wonderful seminar the coming two days, and I'm looking forward to the output. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, now I'm happy to invite uh, Mrs. Um, Janina Ochojska, who, as I mentioned, is the founder of the Polish Humanitarian Action 20 years ago, uh, <coughs> which means it's also her jubilee. Huh? Uh, and she's also the president of the Polish Humanitarian Action Management Board. Ladies and gentlemen, I have never dreamed that uh, one day Together with NOHA, we will celebrate the 25th anniversary. But uh, without the dreams, nothing can be achieved. So let's not, let's, uh, not stop dreaming. Uh, it is really very important. I would like to take the opportunity to thank uh, some person very important in the organization of uh, this uh, meeting. So uh, the University of Warsaw and especially Mrs. Jolanta Choinska Mika, Vice Rector, and uh, Professor Elżbieta Mikos Skuza from, <coughs> from NOHA and uh, Warsaw University. Also, the network of uh, <coughs> humanitarian action, NOHA, and especially Professor Jost Herman, president of NOHA. Uh, and also the keynote speakers, panelists, uh, who have come from all over the world to share their knowledge and expertise. But also, uh, I would like to thank uh, the employees and volunteers of Polish Humanitarian Action for their in involvement and support in organizing this conference. Um, you are very welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, but uh, especially, uh, I would like to welcome our heads of uh, all missions uh, of Polish Humanitarian Action. Thank you really for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, as I stand here before you, the participants of the conference marking the 25th anniversary of NOHA and PACH, I cannot but recall a memorable moment 25 years ago. On December 26, 1992 in Krakow, I am sitting in my car, followed by 12 trucks filled with aid and a bus of journalists. We are setting off to help to the besieged Sarajevo. As I signaled for the departure, I felt that if I, 
disabled Janka, an astronomer by education, with no means at my disposal, was able in two months to organize the first convoy to Sarajevo from Poland, it meant I was also able to do much more for the others. Poland was then slowly emerging from oppression it had suffered over the years under the communist regime. Solidarity, the movement which helped us regain our freedom, opened up the human solidarity of Poles towards the innocent victims of war. At that time, I didn't know yet that I was about to open a new important chapter in the development of the Polish presence in the international humanitarian aid. Today, as we attempt to summar summarize the 25 years of assistant, assistance provided by the Polish humanitarian action to the civilian victims of armed conflict, natural disasters, and to communities living in long-term poverty, I am, thinking, I am thinking about more than a thousand wells, water reservoirs, and other water and sanitation systems in Iraq, Afghanistan, South Sudan, Somalia, Syria, Palestine, Darfur, Pakistan, Burma, and Sri Lanka. I, and I am also thinking about the effective assistance provided to hundreds of thousands of people whose lives or well-being were threatened by humanitarian crisis in the former Yugoslavia, in Chechnya, Kazakhstan, Georgia, Cameroon, Haiti, Ukraine, Iran, Bieslan, as well as in Poland after the floods. Behind the names of these places, there stand the tragedies of people and the meticulously planned, carefully organized and delivered assistance. The support provided by the Polish humanitarian action in more than 40 countries and our experience gained in extreme, extreme situations, providing assistance while developing standards of quality, is a modest testimony to the fact that even such a small organization can permanently improve the lives of millions of people by giving them opportunities for development. The Polish humanitarian action is a team of professional humanitarian workers who work in the field under difficult circumstances, saving people's lives and health while often facing life-threatening situations. A team of employees and volunteers who share a common passion of helping fellow human beings and the belief that each of us carries within themselves the power to transform the world for the better. We cannot leave anyone without assistance. This call poses enormous challenges for humanitarian organizations. Let me just mention some of them. The experts here present will discuss them in detail, in detail later. How to solve the problem? of millions of people who have been living for over 20 years in refugee camps in which they depend entirely on external assistance. How to best reach out to those in need when access is increasingly hampered by government and military groups? I cannot but recall here the tragedy of half of a million Rohingya who escaped religious persecution in Bangladesh, to Bangladesh. How to overcome 
the indifference of international institutions and politicians, which is the source of recurring humanitarian catastrophes, whose effects could have often been prevented. How to ensure the safety of those in need why it is increasingly difficult to ensure it for humanitarian workers and medical staff. How to respond to the challenge of providing quality assistance in hard to access area as in Syria. What is the best way to involve the beneficiaries in the decision making process? We all know it, yet it needs to be repeated over and over again. What is needed is the best possible cooperation between INGOs, institutions, local organizations and the beneficiaries, as well as co cooperation with the citizens of our native countries in order to mobilize them, to take up humanitarian attitudes, and to support aid. We also need to pressure the government to meet their international obligations, although it has increased the amount of funds intended for aid, Poland does not fulfill it commit, its commitment to allocate 0.33% of gross national income to official development assistance. Over the past 10 years, its level has not exceeded 0.1% of gross national income. Humanitarian aid affects the fate of an individual. Therefore, quality, the consistency of actions, the standards of help and transparency are the key determinants of aid value. All these principles are extremely important, yet what the world we leave behind will be like depends above all on our resolve to see our lives as existence in the service of the others. I would like to make you aware that each of us may contribute to creating a world in which every person on the earth will have access to water and thus to food and will have the opportunity for growth. We all have free will to do good or evil. It may seem naive, but it has opened the way for people of good will who by their work, knowledge and resources support the mission of the Polish humanitarian action. I believe that every person in his freedom wants to do good, though he does not always succeed. This is the foundation on which we have built the strength of the Polish humanitarian action. We are no longer afraid to take the trouble of changing the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>